topic of equity is one that arts and culture is grappling with, not only here in Seattle, in the state, but nationally. People take credit for the equity work that they're doing at this particular moment, but I think that we're, as a sector, still just kind of fumbling around and trying to figure out how you undo the systems that exist so such that we have more equitable outcomes for everyone. And that's, I feel, where for culture is right now as well, and I'm just wanting to admit, I think, the place that we're in, I think that's the way that you can actually intentionally evolve forward. It's a long path forward. I'm just happy I get to write a particular chapter of this book that's hopefully beneficial and helpful um, with the power and I think the privilege and honor of the positions that I've been able to have. My experience to date in the cultural sector is the exact reason why I find myself and deliberately chose to work at a funding agency. So I started out um, as one of the founding staff members at the Northwest African American Museum where I served as deputy director and head curator um, for nine, ten years almost starting that brand new institution and it was really a corrective action on my part. I grew up um, in Central Washington where there isn't a black history museum or black arts center um, and that was something that I knew needed to be fixed. Um, I knew that it was a problem and I was raised by a father who said it's not really a problem unless you're willing to jump in and help out with the solution. Um, from the North African American Museum, I moved to the Oregon Historical Society, which is the de facto state history museum located in Portland, Oregon, and I served as a museum director there. And I was really curious about whether or not the community-based approach that we had utilized to build the North African American Museum, and especially those questions, again, about who is served, who gets a seat at the table to make choice, what does shared authority look like from a curatorial and interpretive standpoint, would that work at a quote unquote legacy or mainstream or white, historically um, white institution. Um, from there, I moved to an exciting project um, back in Seattle, the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture. It's the state's natural history museum and they were in the midst of a over hundred million dollar capital campaign to build a new building and I came in as the director of interpretation and it was exciting. I think anytime an organization is going through change, it's an opportunity for it to look at itself um, really, really deeply and to, I think, question, um, is it living up to its responsibility? What I came to realize is that the change that's required in the cultural sector to bring about actual um, processes, methods, and outcomes that I believe are equitable requires um, funding. It requires capacity. It requires the ability to do something different. It requires, um, it requires an individual and then an organization to say, we are not going to fund what we have always historically funded, program, right, this exhibit or that public program or that educational initiative, and instead we're going to recognize the responsibility we have to bring in those voices and stories that have not been there in the past. And those moments of change always require money and they require um, a development department and they require an executive director that's willing to take a risk to make change that might um, it might alter their existing revenue streams or what they consider to be predictable revenue streams all that to say um, it was this i think growing awareness within me of the power that funders have um, because of the values that funders have I think a public funding agency has particular responsibilities um, towards the greater good, especially as a public development authority for culture has to look after the cultural health of an entire county. And with that comes, I think, some responsibilities to um, act in a collective manner and stitch together um, other funders and other systems to work towards improvement. I feel like it's a mandate of a public funding agency. So it was an interesting opportunity for me and that's how I came to For Culture because I had questions. How does funding work? Who gets to actually decide what the guidelines are? Who gets to make the decisions around criteria that, I mean, as you know, somebody I'm sure who applies for grants, what the grant asks for, you will provide. And so those people, I want to question who 
right, makes those choices about what's requested from a grant applicant, who gets to actually make the decisions, is that table representative of a changing America. And that's why I'm here today. So one of the programs that I helped start here for Culture was called Hello. And the idea of Hello was really similar to office hours um, that you would go to in college in that we wanted to place ourselves outside the four walls of the organization and make ourselves available for those organizations, individual artists, groups, collectives that might not think that we are for them or might not think that there is an avenue of access to the resources that we have. And we realize that if we could get out of these four walls and place ourselves in different locations all throughout King County and advertise it well and reach out through our ambassadors in different communities, that we might right, be able to bring forth people to meet us who had historically not been on our radar. And it was at one of these hello events that this Filipino cultural group came. And I said, I've never heard of this group. I can't believe there's a Filipino cultural history group down in Algona. I said, we're going. And that's the most important part to me is that the handshake that needs to happen between funding organizations and cultural organizations that have not historically received funding from it. it it's not just the, the impersonal grant application. I wanted to go down there and I went with my colleague, Chieko Phillips, and we just wanted to talk with him. So we go down and they get together the entire board of their organization, all of these community leaders, and they provide lunch for us. And we really talk for, must have been two hours, not just about the grants that Four Culture has, but what they're trying to do as an organization. And for us, it's not a rescue mission. There's gonna be culture practice in every community by every group, how institutionalized it is, how formal it is, um, how much acclaim or press that it gets is going to vary, but that group's just fine. They've been going at it for 50, 60 years down there. They don't actually need for culture. The question was, we have public dollars. I have a responsibility to make sure they get out to a lot of folks who, culture, who practice culture in different ways. What can we do in partnership? I came up in a small town that um, didn't have a lot of museums or cultural organizations that shared the stories of my family. I didn't see a lot on the walls or on the stages or on the screens that looked like me, that felt like me, or that represented me. I also didn't see a lot of people that I knew in those cultural spaces. So I did not feel they were for my father, who's African American. I didn't feel like they were for my mom, who's a native Spanish speaker. I didn't feel like they were for my sister, who's gay. I didn't feel like they were for my friends who were differently abled. So I didn't fall in love with the arts. Um, and even to this day, it's kind of strange because I'm a strong advocate, um, but I'm an advocate for the very best that arts can be as opposed to what I currently find them at right now. So in a lot of ways, I consider myself a critic and a malcontent within the arts sector, but one who's willing to give, I think, my entire career to helping improve this sector overall. Mm -hmm.